to start with, can you tell me a little bit about what the divide or the book it's based on, the spirit level, is about? What's the focus of this film? Well, the spirit level is a book that's written by two academics from York University. It's rather surprising success, publishing success, actually. It's sold well over 100,000 copies in this country and also been published in over 20 countries around the world. The book argues that if you look at the data, that those societies that are equal societies, the more equal the society it is, the better the outcomes for everybody in that society. Low levels of crime, you know, low levels of depression, low levels of teenage pregnancy, everybody benefits in a society that is more equal than an unequal one. That's what the book argues, crammed with charts and data and stat statistics and figures. I'm guessing not so much fun to turn pie charts into a feature film. Catherine, where's the challenge here? The challenge was, of course, as a, as a book, it's incredibly fascinating to look at lots of graphs and charts, et cetera, et cetera, but it's not necessarily, although many films have been done that have used graphs and charts, um, I felt that this subject actually, because it's about society and it's about social relationships, it's about what makes us who we are and our behavior and really about quite personal things, that actually the way to make this come to life was actually, what about if we kind of looked about what the meaning of those charts. So what if we kind of basically put a face to what the data was saying? So actually there's absolutely no data in the film whatsoever. Um, it's simply seven stories of people in different levels of income across the US and the UK, um, all, trying to get, all trying to make a better life for themselves, um, interwoven with what happens to the economy and the distribution of wealth over the last 35 years. So you've humanized these figures. How do you pick the humans? Well, I mean, it's always going to be a matter of um, chance, in a way. Um, a very, very long process of research, essentially. In fact, over a year, almost two years of talking to people at all different levels of income, different sectors of the economy, in unequal, I mean, it focuses on the US and the UK, which are both um, very unequal, in, in very unequal parts of those countries, and actually finding out what happens in those communities to those people? Does the data actually bear out on an individual level? And then from that, kind of looking at which people are kind of most pertinent that might get across the big story. Now, one of the great things about making a documentary is often when you're making it, you learn a lot as well, which you can hope to pass on to the people watching the film. What was it that surprised you or maybe shocked you when making The Divide? I think just how difficult it is for a vast majority of people, actually. I think it's often sort of portrayed as a, um, an, a poverty issue and that it's something that doesn't affect you unless you're really at the very, very bottom of the income scale. And actually, what struck me was when talking to people who are actually quite comfortably off um, and sort of speaking about their hopes and fears and, 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 and worries and just how insecure actually a vast majority of people in the US and in this country are uh, and that it isn't just something that we can say oh it's it's just people who are really poor that are struggling anymore it's, it really is something that kind of infiltrates the whole of society. What do you want audiences to feel when they watch this? Do you want them to actually realise you know no one's comfortable I have financial problems I have worries but I never really expected that you know the the psychiatrist who lives the high life does as well. I mean I think that it's very easy to think, I mean as I said earlier, it's very easy to think that this is a problem that affects other people and that it isn't something that's actually a society-wide problem and it's not that you know there's a particular thing that you're meant to think after watching the film but it certainly brings into sharp focus what's happening over our entire society and that not, nobody in this film is actually out of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. They're all people like you or I, um, our neighbours, our friends, you know, any one of us could end up in any one of these seven positions actually. Um, and I suppose it's just really to ask that fundamental question as to what actually we want for our society and what the best thing is in order to sort of um, enable us to have secure, happy futures for ourselves and for our families. Well, I hope it makes lots of people wake up and realise we're heading in the wrong direction. And there are lots of things that we can do about this. I mean, this is not an inevitability mm -hmm. by any means. There are, you know, there are changes in the law, there are changes in regulations, there are changes in the way we live, there are changes in attitudes. We can change all this if we want, and we can make this play, this world, you know, a better place in which, you know, our children, grandchildren will be happier than people are at the moment. And that's what I hope that, you know, it'll make help people wake up and do something.